Hi everybody, Michael Anderson with ETEL Solutions. Thanks for joining me on part two of our deep dive into distributed logistics for digital commerce. Uh, if you missed the session last week, what we covered was really how distributed logistics for digital commerce is kind of a shift in paradigm from more traditional uh, distribution and retail. Uh, today in part two, we're going to cover the primary functions of distributed logistics and I'm trying to stay very agnostic in terms of the actual platform and really just cover from a high level what the five touch points are that are required by every digital commerce channel out there and how that relates then into your fulfillment strategy and distributed logistics. Um, so as a quick regroup, what we uncovered last week is that Digital commerce is really all about yield management. And yield management is uh, defined as a strategic control of inventory to sell the right product to the right customer, the right time for the right price. And in the online world, that can be fairly complex. So before I dive into the five touch points, I wanted to just really quickly cover uh, the top three things that we run into with our customers that they're struggling with and looking for solutions for. Um, and uh, all this will loop back into what we're going to talk about. Uh, the first is that they struggle with systems that aren't working together. So whether that's disparate ERP and WMS systems, whether it's that they're working with a 3PL who's got their own WMS that they've got to integrate to, maybe they're drop shipping or cross docking from a supplier, or they've got to integrate to their point of sale system to do BOPIS or to do uh, third party pickup or micro fulfillment. All of those require integrations to different systems and uh, generally speaking, a lot of those systems aren't really known for flexibility and oftentimes that can involve large budgets and timelines uh, to get things going. The next thing that we run into very often would be the challenge around trying to understand what true demand is across all of these channels. Um, many times these, uh, these demand signals are coming in from different systems and therefore trying to aggregate that back to a single SKU in that base unit of measure to understand how many should we build, how many should we order, whatever, that can be very challenging. The third thing that we run into quite often then as well is trying to figure out, okay, so I can sell on these different channels and I can even bring the orders down, but now how do I uh, manage my fulfillment efficiently across a network of supply? Um, if you've got retail locations you can leverage or multiple DCs or FCs or a 3PL maybe on the other side of the country, um, there's a lot of different ways to route those orders and how do you do that in a way that's profitable first and foremost, but you're maximizing profit and how do you do it in a way that still gets the order to the consumer in the time that they expect it in order to be able to leverage some of these uh, seller fulfilled prime uh, you know, pro type of programs that are out there. Uh, so let's dig in. Uh, if you recall from last week, we also look, we looked at the different types of digital commerce. We looked at the different types of fulfillment. And um, one of the things that we learned as we get into the five touch points here, we learned a long time ago that uh, really all of these digital commerce channels require the same five touch points. And they are that, first of all, you need to know or be able to tell them what it is that you have. Each and every one of these digital channels has their own taxonomy. Um, even if they don't call it that. It's basically the categories and subcategories and subcategories and then the content within that bottom node uh, that they're going to have as required fields and other attributes that you can load up. A simple example, if you're selling a flat screen TV, you're going to care about things like refresh rate and screen size. If you are uh, selling a fishbowl, those attributes don't apply. That's all controlled by what's known as the taxonomy. And so not only do you have to be able to publish out to those sales channels in the way that they want to see them according to their taxonomy, but you want to be able to have a, a, a product information management or a multi-channel PIM solution that's driven by those taxonomies so that you can have a single source of truth for your catalog and a single place to be able to control that catalog and map that out to these different channels. The second component of what each of these channels is going to need is they're going to need to know how many it is that you have to sell. So you have to be able to learn how to publish out to these channels the way that they want to see it. But that also means you need to know what's actually available to sell. And this is where distributed logistics really starts to come in. 
because now you have the need to be able to look across this entire network of supply and try and determine what of that am I going to turn around and publish for sale, right? The third component is you need to know what you're going to be able to sell it for. So of course you need to be able to deal with things like uh, multi-currency, uh, you might need to deal with some things like uh, uh, competitive repricing, you might need to have different triggers like stock, age, um, uh, velocity based triggers, those types of things that you're going to want to build into your pricing strategies and tools. But the most important thing, in addition to those things, but the, the most important thing is understanding what it actually costs to deliver in the first place. And when you have a network of supply and many different points of distribution, you have the need to be able to set up and manage your shipping cost models from every single one of those. So first you need to know, uh, uh, in order to be able to deal with the next step, which is downloading orders, you have to be able to obviously get them from the sales channel, but then you need to know what does it cost to fulfill them across this network. Um, so that means the shipping cost models, it means your product costs, it means actual availability at the point in time that the order is brought down. This is known as distributed order management, or DOM, as, as it's called in the industry. So uh, that's effectively just doing a search. Where's the product available? What are my possible options as to where I could ship that from and still meet the timelines required by the user? And then what is the, uh, the most cost-effective way to do that? In other words, how do I maximize my profit after the sale? And then the automation to route that order. And then the last step, as you probably surmised by now, is once you have that order shipped out, getting that tracking information and getting it back out to the sales channel of origin. So those are the five touch points that you need to be able to manage. Now, let's take it one layer deeper here. When you look at uh, what it takes to actually pull this off, and you go kind of beneath the surface, there's a, a fundamental thing that we at least have found as being critical, and that is to have a channel-centric architecture. Now, the reason this is important, I already kind of touched on a little bit when we talked about taxonomies, but keep in mind that every single one of these endpoints on both the demand and the supply side has their own technology integration layer. In other words, uh, you might need to deal with EDI, you might need to deal with flat files, you might need to deal with an API, in order to be able to integrate with these endpoints. So they've got different technology requirements, they've got different taxonomies, in other words, their content. You have a need to price differently on each channel. You may have a need to publish inventory differently based on the channel. All five of these touch points can vary on a per channel basis. Therefore, you need an architecture that will allow you to have those channels uh, function in different ways, but bring everything back to the center to be managed in a consistent way. So everything is normalized at the center, and those are the five touch points that we just touched on. So beyond that, then you need the ability to automate jobs and automate tasks. Um, now, automation requires data integrity. If you think about this, um, automation, if, it, if you don't have data integrity, the only thing automation will do is dig a hole for you that much faster, right? So data integrity is paramount here, but once you have data integrity, then you can allow the system to start to automate some things for you. So you have an automation suite, but then also, because you have so many different endpoints to kind of stay on top of, automation in and of itself uh, is powerful, but it's not enough because you have to be able to see what's going on. So in certain scenarios, you might, uh, you might see that a job ran. Fantastic. That's great. But what if it was supposed to process a thousand items and only processed five? The job's still completed. We call that a silent error. The job's still completed, but how do you know? How are, how are you made aware of the fact that it didn't process what you thought it should process and maybe you should take a look at it? So that's where the monitoring framework comes into play. And then, of course, you have a massive opportunity to leverage all the data that's being aggregated against the common SKU and the base unit of measure. You can see profitability from any number of different angles. Uh, truly a great opportunity to understand demand regionally, who are your best suppliers, uh, where are you making the most money, etc. So that's pretty much it in terms of the high level of the primary functions of distributed logistics. Now, uh, next time, we're going to tie that all down to master SKU management. How do you tie this all together, both on the demand and the supply side? What do you have to think about in regards to that? So thanks again for your time. I hope this was helpful today. We'll talk with you soon.